I have the DJI Goggles 2 and the DJI Goggles V1. Should I update my Vistas to work with the goggles and sell my V1 goggles? So, Bobby, this is a personal decision. I have to tell you, I have switched my personal birds with Vistas on them. I have updated the firmware and switched to the goggles too. The lighter weight, smaller size, and OLED screens of the goggles too have been sort of the, the compelling factors that made me want to switch. Um, there are some arguments that you'll get better performance with the V1. Uh, Chris Rosser measured, I believe he measured the Vista to output more power when used with the V2 goggles and the V1 goggles than with the goggles 2. Uh, in addition, the antennas on the V1 and the V2 goggles are circular polarized, which is which matches what most people have on their Vista. Whereas if you go to the goggles 2, they will have linear antennas and you will get less range because unless you put linear antennas on your Vista, which you certainly could do, but most people don't. Um, the latency on the goggles too is worse as well. That's a good point, Blue J. Uh, the goggles too only go at 100 frames per second. The V1 goggles go at 120 frames per second and have slightly lower latency. All that being said, I have switched to the G2 because of the, I like the screens better and the smaller size. Blue J says the field of view on the goggles too sucks. To me, this is a wash. To me, the goggles too have a plenty big field of view. And if anything, the V1 and the V2 goggles have too big of a field of view. But that's a personal decision and everybody will feel differently about that. Um, frequent Flyer RC. Similar question to the previous one about the TBS Tango and the Pyrodrone gimbals. Why does my quad flip to the right faster than it flips to the left? The first thing to check is to go to the receiver tab and move the stick to the left and move it to the right and check your endpoints. If your stick is going to 1000 on the left and only 1800 on the right, then beta flight will not perceive you as going to full deflection. That's the first thing you got to check. Number one, calibrate the gimbals on the radio. Number two, adjust your endpoints and then it should be fine. Um, there are a couple people asking questions. I want to get this question uh, about my build kit. Why is HD0 listed as compatible with the freestyle kit? So first of all, what people are talking about is... One second. What people are talking about is... This kit, so we just published the 2023 version of my DIY kit. Uh, this kit has everything you need to build an FPV drone and a very detailed set of videos. It's like 14 videos. It's like two or three hours of content. Everything you need to get started in FPV, hand as much hand-holding as I can possibly do to try to make things as easy as possible for a beginner. Um, you're gonna order the kit. And you also need to buy a receiver and obviously you're going to need a controller and batteries and a charger. So it doesn't technically have everything you need, but uh, you're going to make those decisions for yourself. We didn't want to like make those decisions for you. But the question is, why is it not listed as compatible with HD0? And the reason for that is that the HD0 freestyle video transmitter just barely fits inside the frame. And I didn't feel good about recommending it. Now you can put the HD0 freestyle video transmitter in the back of this frame. It will have about a millimeter of clearance to the standoffs and it will hang out so far over the edges of the frame that I think it is unacceptably likely to get damaged and I just don't like it and didn't want to recommend it. You could decide to use the HD0 race video transmitter, which has 20 millimeter mounting but it only goes to 200 milliwatts. And for a freestyle quad, I didn't feel like that was enough to like recommend. 
Um, so those are the reasons why it's not right listed as, as compatible. It's not that you can't do it, it's just that it will require some compromises, and I didn't feel like it was a very good idea, and I didn't want to like say, yeah, you could do this, it's no problem, and then have you break your video transmitter or have shitty, unex shitty short range and be mad about it. Um... Night Owl wants to know, should we have been using linear antennas all along with digital video links? No. No, 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 no. Night Owl. I don't know why DJI decided to use linear antennas for the Goggles 2 and the O3. I can Pres tell you why. Presumably they had a good reason because DJI doesn't do this shit by accident. Why do they do it, Plenty? Do you know? Because their drones have the antennas in a certain direction and 90% of the people flying their drones are going to fly with the drone straight up. So you're going to get a better signal with linears matching the linears because they're going to match almost all the time. That's my two cents. If you look at the yeah, feet of the Avada, have... there's antennas in the feet of the Avada. If you look at the FPV drone, there's antennas in the feet of the FPV drone. Like they're all like lined up perfectly with linear. Oh, so to me, but, but like, the, you're yeah. saying that the Avada, et cetera, et cetera, all the other drones that are going to be used with the goggles too have linear antennas. Yes. And and so DJI decided to put linear antennas on the goggles too so that they would work best with their own drones. Well, well remember, the goggles V2 also shipped with linear antennas. The goggles V1 had circular polarized. The goggles V2 shipped linear. Is that true? Yes, that is true. That's interesting. I'm not sure. I, I certainly didn't remember that if mm -hmm. I knew that. Um, but But the answer is that for a given type of data link, like digital or whatever, you could use linear antennas, you could use circular, circular antennas. There are pros and cons to both, but there's no like assumption that a digital bi-directional video link should use circular or should use linear. I don't think that's the case. DJI uses linear. There are various reasons why they might decide to do that. Um, but the, I wouldn't go so far as to say, like, we should have been using linear this whole time. The most important thing is to match the polarization of the antenna on the aircraft with the antenna on the goggles. Although, that's not even true. Because, like, tiny whoops with little, little lightweight wire antennas, which are linear, I still prefer to use those with circular antennas on the goggle. Because a circular polarized antenna is not... Uh, sensitive to the orientation of the other antenna. And so a tiny whoop with a linear antenna on it, if it's going to a linear antenna on the goggles and they are out of orientation because the tiny whoop is doing a flip, you'll get much worse reception. Whereas if you have a circular antenna on the goggles and a linear antenna on the quad, you will always get about 3 dB of loss, but it'll be a constant 3 dB of loss, which is independent of the orientation of the quad, which to me is the right decision. Um, so then what's the best, is that also true? I mean, if you have the goggles too with linear antennas on them and you have a Vista with a circular antenna, doesn't that same argument hold? Huh. I mean, I guess it does. If I'm going to run tiny whoops with a linear antenna and say that circular antennas on the goggle are a good match for that, should I also make the same argument with a Vista? I guess I should. Uh, interesting. Um, 